Center Missionary Stories for Children. Isn't this the most exciting story you have ever heard? I have prayed more about this lesson to give this out in a way that would change every person's life that is listening. We're to love the Lord thy God with all of our heart and all of our soul and with all of our mind and all of our strength and our neighbor as ourselves. But we cannot love anyone without the love of Christ. That is a perfect love. That is divine love. That is the fruit of the Spirit, is love, joy, and peace. Nathan had peace and joy for his newfound faith in Christ because he knew this was real. He understood the Trinity because he had studied the Old Testament and he could point back to the Old Testament of many things that brought to light, was brought to light in the New Testament that you could not find in any other way. He loved the Word of God. He loved Ali. He loved everyone, just like we are to do, just like Christ. What would he have done without one friend? What would he have done if his, grand, if his mother and father had done the same thing that his grandfather did. You see, every person that's listening needs love. Children don't need things. They need parents' love. This was so exciting for Nathan that he had such wonderful parents. And then, after his grandfather died, this was a sad thing. He, he had sadness because his grandmother still didn't talk to him, and his grandfather now is gone. It may be too late for some of you that have hatred toward those that have died, but you can ask God to forgive you, and His blood will cleanse you from all sin. Don't live a life of hatred for someone that has gone on. Whether they are in heaven, you don't know. We don't know who is truly born again. Only God knows that because he looks on the heart. But don't go to bed tonight. The Jewish people had five daily offerings. They started at six o'clock in the morning with a blood offering with a sacrifice. They ended at six o'clock in the evening with a trespass offering if they had anything against their fellow man. That's why the New Testament says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. This is so important in the day in which we're living because time is very, very short. Christ came to this earth 2,000 years ago. He's been in heaven for 2,000 years. He is coming to this earth to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. But today is the age of grace, the dispensation of the Davidic covenant. All you have to do is believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Don't wait another minute. You have seen how terrible this is that his grandfather died. You can see the deep hurt for the whole family. So we are asking for every person that hears this story to never hate another person. Because God is love. God is light, and we must love. The Holy Spirit is love, joy, and peace. When you have his love, he had joy and peace no matter what had happened, but he had sadness that his grandfather was lost. This is the only thing in the world that causes us to be sad, is to know 
that we can look at someone and hate them because God's word says we are a murderer if we hate another person. So we must see this in these lessons. God has given it to me for you. And this is our desire, God's perfect will. So we saw how his mother and his, his, his mother and his father now are at his grandmother's house, and we saw how he wept tears. It's, not a, it's nothing to weep tears. His, his grandmother wept over her husband. But you know what she said? One of the things that she said, blessed is the true judge. You see, this is why we are to have perfect love. So we started that we were going to have some lessons on the book of John in this. I want you to read John chapter 1 all through verse 33. I'm not going to read it all today. I can't in this lesson because I want to finish this this week. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. He was truly man, and he was truly God. All things were made by him, and without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. We, never, we don't have life until we receive this gift of eternal life. And the life was the light of men. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And the light shineth in darkness. Everybody's in darkness without Christ. And the darkness comprehendeth it not. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. This is his incarnation. This is his divine conception he is the living Word. This Word is the shining light of the glory of Christ. You must study it for you to manifest Christ to this world. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we're asking for great and mighty things which we know not. We're asking in Christ's name. If we ask in His name, Thou will do it that the Father may be glorified for 100-fold today, that every person right now, even that has a doubt that they're not a child of God, to call upon thee to save them this moment. And they will be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. And they will have thy divine nature dwelling in them until we are raptured to be with the Lord. And we thank thee for these wonderful truths. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we know that the Passover, and we're going to learn this about the Passover, was the next day. And they could not mourn for seven days after that because the Passover was a time of rejoicing. And it was commanded of them in the Old Testament. Now, we're going to talk about this just a little later, but we're not going to do this right now. Right now, we're going to talk about what happened after the Passover. They had to bury him before the Passover, and then they could have their Passover celebration. They celebrated for two days. They actually were celebrating their deliverance from Egypt, where they had been in bondage for over 400 years. And it's called a Seder. And they left Egypt with the blood on the doorpost in the shape of a cross. That was pointing to when Christ would come and die on the cross. Their neighbors invited them in to have their Seder dinner with them. And they came, and his, Nathan's grandmother came, and they celebrated together. Now, I want to ask each of us what they do is something we should do. First of all, they had verses, 22 verses 
of thanksgiving for all that God had done for them to deliver them. What about us that has been delivered out of darkness, out of bondage? They were in bondage in Egypt. We are in bondage until we receive Jesus Christ. That's where freedom comes in. That's where security comes in. Everything, we are rich in Christ. And then they would sing a song. After each course, they sang a song from Psalm 118. It's so amazing what they did. And they didn't stay long enough for all the celebration. But just think of Psalm 118. And they picked out the verses of praise that they could sing to him. This is what we are to do every worship day. And that is to worship in spirit and in truth. And listen at some of these things that they sing. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Oh, let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. This is, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And this is what we're to do. This is how they did. And then they left early because of the celebration that they could not stay long because they were saddened over grandfather. This was the first Passover without grandfather, the very first. And then when they got home, this is so exciting. This is the best story for you children, that you are to be a testimony. You see, when they ate and they... All they had food, and we're going to have some of those things that they had at the table, at their Seder, at their Passover. And then, after they got home, this is so exciting. His father, listen at this, after the, his grandmother had gone to bed, he finally, Nathan finally spoke, and, he, and then his father said, My son, did you know that I have been reading your New Testament? And he said, yes, I thought you had. And he said, let's study it together. He had his New Testament in his pocket. He got it out. Nathan, Nathan joked it out. And then he said, I have been studying the book of John. I have been studying the book of John. And he had studied the first 34 verses of the book of John. And then they studied together. And when they started reading this, this is the most amazing thing. His mother said, may I come and listen in. Tonight, he said, I would like to read part of the book of John. I want to see if my son has the same questions that I have. I have been asking myself during this Passover celebration, and I have taught this so many times, and no Jew has the answer. Listen at this. He said, well, son, do these verses cause you to question anything about our Passover celebration? Oh, yes, Father, they really do. And I almost let my, his father said, I almost let my question pop out tonight after he had been studying the book of John at our Seder, that I wanted to ask, but now I'm asking, why don't we have a lamb at our feast as God commanded the Jews on the first Passover supper, the first Passover night in Egypt? Nathan said, I've asked this many, many times he said, always the answer is the same. The lamb had to be slain for them to put that on the doorpost, but it had to be slain in the temple, and they put the blood on the doorpost, and he said, behold the lamb of God in John 1, 29, which taketh away the sin of the world. Nathan thought for a moment. It says the lamb of God came unto his own, and Verse 11 of John 1, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. This is a Jewish people. This is you listening today. And then he said, maybe that's the reason 
God allowed the temple to be destroyed. They have to have a lamb. They have to have the blood before they can celebrate the Passover. And then his father kept thinking and talking. He said, tonight, I want you to know that I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. He said, I know now that this was the Lamb of God. All through all of these years, they have been without a lamb, without the blood for the Passover. Unless you're a child of God, you can't celebrate the birth and the resurrection of Christ. You know nothing about peace and joy. Nathan's mother glanced over as she said, we don't want grandmother to hear us, to bring her more sorrow. She said, I too am a Christian and have been ever since your bar mitzvah. When you stood so bravely before all those people and you told them you had trusted Jesus Christ as Messiah, I did believe that moment. I wasn't brave like you, Nathan. I've told no one until now. They all let tears run down their eyes. This was the happiest time of their whole life. No one wanted to go to bed. All they wanted to do was to worship the Lord. Then he said, let me read some more from this book. I want to read about Nicodemus when he came to Jesus at night. And Nicodemus was a teacher. He was a religious man, but he was lost. And I studied this, and I have studied this. And then he said in John 3, listen at this, the people had been disobedient. And this goes back to the Old Testament. Listen at what he said. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. All of these are in our Old Testament. That's in Numbers 21. And if they would look at that brazen serpent that he put on the door, then they would know that this was a picture of Jesus Christ going to the cross to die for our sins. Every person that had been bitten by snakes were dying, this serpent. And if they would just look and live, that's what we have to do. We have to believe and live. Then he gives us life. And then this brought something new to them. This was something else that they knew that God had given them this lesson so they would know. These lessons are all here for every person that's listening today. And I want to ask you, as we go to Exodus chapter 12, as they put that, lamp, that blood on the doorpost, they were inside, only God outside, and the angel. Every person that didn't have the blood on the doorpost, their oldest son died. And the ones that had the blood, they were saved. They were saved by the blood and by power, just like we are. And in 1 Corinthians 5, 7, For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. And then Peter says, It is not, the blood, it is not silver and gold, but it is the precious blood of Christ that redeems us. And when they, he saw the blood, he said, I will pass over you. The blood secured all of those that the need of those sinful people. The blood cleanses you this moment. It is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul. And then those inside, they had perfect peace and rest that not one soul in that house would die. Because he said, when I see the blood... I will pass over you.
Then the blood was a token for Jehovah. They were not to see the blood, but he, in passing through, saw the blood. This was faith in what Jehovah had said he would do. He would deliver them. Colossians 1.20 And having made peace through the cross, through the blood of Jesus Christ, having made peace through the blood of the cross, and then upon the Lamb of God, the holy substitute died instead of me. The sentence, sentence of death was executed on all those that did not have the blood in Egypt. In every home, there was a person died. And now whenever God sees the blood, he passes over us. No more condemnation. No more condemnation. Condemnation means I am guilty and death and judgment is passed. Therefore, we worship in spirit and in truth. And this is, he says, he that believeth on me is not condemned on Jesus Christ, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And then our justification. But perfect justification being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Justification means I have been declared righteous by God. This is the greatest story that's ever been told. And then, not only that, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, leaven speaks of sin. The old leaven must be purged out. 1 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, the leaven of malice and wickedness must be put away. We are all delivered from the indwelling sin in our lives. Saved by grace and called to holiness. Spiritually, the Feast of Unleavened Bread means to live in the energy of the new nature that is to walk in the Spirit. And they had bitter herbs that they ate at this Seder. This is the unleavened bread speaks, and the herbs speaks of self-denial and self-judgment. This is exactly the way every person has to be saved. There's no difference in Jew or Gentile. So that day, he could tell Ollie, his best friend, that his mother and his father had been saved. And he was praying that his grandmother would. So this was a happy time because he wanted to write to his teacher in Chicago. He wrote her this letter, and I can't read it all, but he said, I have been living here in Israel for months now. We like it a lot. We live in old Jerusalem. It is our apartment is heated by the sun. Most of the temple was destroyed many years ago. But we go to the welling wall and pray for, Jesus, for the Messiah to come. The first time I went to the welling wall, I met this little Arab boy. We are really good friends. And now the sad story. My grandfather died without receiving Christ. Perhaps the boys and girls in the club have been praying for me. Please tell them thank you. But ask them please to get busy and tell all of our Jewish friends about the Messiah. I wish I had believed sooner. But now I want everybody and my family to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I want every person, Arabs, Muslims, Gentiles, whomever, to be saved because there is no other way to get to heaven except through Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Study the book of John. Study John 17, all of you that's listening. If you will just study the book of John, you will never doubt that Jesus Christ came 
to save you from your sin and to give you eternal life. And here's what you can always know, that every person in the world, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's no other way to get to heaven. And you must believe this truth. And once you believe this, you become a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You see, this is what this story is all about. This is what this book is all about. And he tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When we reach the speed of light, 186,241 miles per second, we are going to receive a body of light. May this story change your life. Even if you are a child of God and you're not telling others about Christ, you're being disobedient because we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's all say right now, I want to reach every person for Christ. And God will give you wisdom beyond your abilities. And he will go before you and they will be prepared to receive Christ as Savior. Jesus is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day, tell the world that Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returning, there is no time for losing, so be a missionary, God's own emissary, be a missionary too.